trust your first impression. Where are you? I'm in water. Mm -hmm. I'm in water. Tell me about this water. I started on a beach and then I just walked into the water and I'm now just, I am in the water. I'm not really swimming. I'm just floating. Mm -hmm. How does this water feel? It doesn't really feel like water. It feels more like air. Mm -hmm. But I know I'm in water. I'd like for you to focus on yourself. As if you had a spiritual mirror in front of you. What do you envision? What do you see? What do you sense? What does the observer look like? Well, I'm a woman with red hair, and I'm just floating, just floating. Mm -hmm. When you say you're floating, are you floating on your back? No, I'm just like buoyant mm -hmm. in the air, but I think I'm in water. Okay. So you say you have red hair. Can you describe yeah. the rest of you for me? What, is, what do you look like? Like a floaty, not a hard body, just a floaty light being. Mm -hmm. But I have a body. Notice and see if you have anything in your hands. Any clothing? Flow, I have very flowy clothing. Okay. Like I have a green flowy thing. Everything's flowy and floating mm -hmm. and there's no like, it's like all buoyant. Mm -hmm. It's like flowing everywhere. Everything's flowy. All right. So let's find out what it is that you're doing floating on this water. I'd like for you to now connect with that water. And let's find out what the role is that you play with that water. What do you do? I have balance it. Mm -hmm. Balance things in the water. Tell me how you balance it. What do you do to balance? It's a vibrational thing. It's like a harmonic thing. And when things are out of balance, I go and just, I don't know how I do it. I balance things out. Mm -hmm. Are you only balancing the water or do you balance other places too? I can be I can be many places at once. Okay. Do you go by a name? I think they call me Ariel. Mm -hmm. Ariel. 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 Very good. So Ariel, let's find out where it is that you're from. I'd like for you to now close that scene. And let's go drifting and floating to the place where you come from. Be there now. I see a castle. Mm -hmm. Describe this castle for me. It's, um, it's made out of gold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a golden castle. What shape is this castle in? There's many different shapes. It has the the round turret things with the pointy tops, mm -hmm. like a hat, like a birthday hat. Yes. And it has. It's very. It's a very magical place. What's it's around? Very this, shiny. What's around this castle? Look at the surrounding of it. Where is it? 
There's, there's a civilization there. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it seems like a mix of medieval, like I would think of medieval, but very technologically advanced. Mm-hmm. I mean, like there's no horses, uh, drawn carriages or anything. It's, it's more Jetsons-like. Mm-hmm. So let's focus in even closer. Get closer and let's find out what it is that you do in this castle. Oh, I'm an administrator Mm. in the castle. All right, so tell me about your role there. It's a place where souls go. Mm Mm-hmm. In between lives, maybe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, as an administrator, what is it that you do? I weigh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you weigh? Weigh. energies Mm -hmm. I place like quantitative description on energies what is that for to help people know where they want to go next and Mm. what they need to do okay do you do this by yourself or are there others with you Both. Mm-hmm. I, I do it for by myself for certain people that are are souls that are assigned to me, but I also work with another team, and we all do the same thing. Now, these souls, where are they coming from? They call it. Um, they they call it input. So they're coming from other places here. Mm-hmm. So in 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 put and in take something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, they are coming from different places, all different places. Now, when you first saw this castle, you said that it looked kind of medieval. When the people come to you, these souls, what do they look like? They're people. Mm -hmm. How are they dressed? How do they look? They actually look pretty haggard. Mm. Pretty... Tired, um, tor- torn clothing, mm-hmm. a little distressed. Tell me more about that. Well, it's like they have a lot of baggage with them, and they are lost. When you say they have a lot of baggage, is this physical baggage or emotional baggage? Well, I'm seeing it like it's physical baggage that is, or emotional baggage that is, they're physically 
wearing on their face and their clothes and their just the, their energy field. Mm-hmm. They've got a lot of stuff going on. Mm-hmm. So what we do when we process them is is we help to figure out how we can best balance that part of that energy field that they're carrying that is making them like that Mm -hmm. to identify what that is. So can you take me through the process of what a soul goes through? What do you do? What a soul goes through? Mm -hmm. After you see them so haggard, do you process them? Do you change them? Oh, we talk. Mm -hmm. We talk about what they're carrying and what they're feeling and what their experience is. And, And we hold, we... We've done this so long that we we just know. We know what to do. We know how to help them. All right, so in this place where you are now, I'd like for you now to close the scene and let's go to a time when something very important happened. Be there now. whole bunch of people are coming at once. Mm -hmm. What's that? Groups of them. There's more than we can handle at one time. Let's find out what happened to create this influx. They're homeless. Can you explain what that means? They've lost their home, Mm -hmm. their planet. Is this one planet or several? This this group, this large group of souls is from one planet. Do you know what planet that is? Does it have a name? I think they're from I think they're from a planet called Mal Maldek. Mm-hmm. Maldek. Maldek. What happened on Maldek? to cause all of these souls to come to you. My planet was blown up. It exploded. That's why they look like they have torn, burned clothes, Mm -hmm. frazzled hair. They look homeless. So when they appear to you, do they appear in the form in which they transitioned? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, so. So how do you feel about this? Having to deal with all of these? Well, there's too many of them. It's hard to, for all of us, to handle. Mm-hmm. It's sad. They just, they don't even harbor any emotions other than they've lost everything. They've lost it all. So let's now fast forward and see how this was handled. They got, they got shipped off to somewhere else for further processing. We couldn't handle it all there. Mm-hmm. Where are these administrative places that process these souls? They're on... They're like spheres. Mm-hmm. And they're... 
What is that? What does it look like? Spheres. Spheres. Are these many spheres? Well, they're dispersed out mm -hmm. different places, yes. Mm -hmm. So when one transitions, do they go to one of these spheres? Yes. Mm -hmm. And in the spheres, you had mentioned that something looked like a castle. Does the sphere have some sort of an atmosphere? Mm. Does it look like anything inside? It's, it's like a, it's like a grand, like a grandiose hall type place. It's, it's a creation. Mm -hmm. It's a creation that is, oh, it's, it's like a hall of, it's like a, what is it? Describe it. Well, inside, it's like there's a lot of books. It looks looks different on the inside. Doesn't look like castle. It looks more on the inside, like a library. Mm -hmm. This library does it look modern or ancient? It looks very old. Mm -hmm. And it has books that come alive that have animated covers, animation, different colors, different symbols and crests, and some of them are really, really, really high up. Can you describe some of these books for me? What are they for? are they used for? They're records. Can you find one of these books? Something that pertains to a life that's very important to you. That has meaning. Let's find your book. My book has an aquamarine cover that sparkles with gold. Mm -hmm. How big is this book? Um, it's not that big. Hmm. What does it say on the outside? Anything? No. No, but the the golden sparkles mm -hmm. like pop off the top, pop out of the top like fireworks. Uh -uh. When you look at this book, what do you feel from it? Joy. Mm -hmm. How do you open this book? Just turn the pages. Mm -hmm. So let's open this book and find out something about the life of Michelle that would be pertinent for her to know today. This, this book doesn't have everything in it. Mm -hmm. This is just a portion of, of her experience. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about that. 
Is it incomplete? This book couldn't possibly hold the experiences. It's, it's just a portion that has been narrowed down for only what she needs to, to explore right now. It's, it's a metaphor. Mm-hmm. So who, so who edits this book? The angels do. Mm. So let's find out what's in this book that we can take from today. Let's go to the pages that will answer her questions. Open the book and see what's there. What do you see? It, it's like it becomes a hologram. Mm -hmm. What do you see? Organizing and Everything has its place. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about that. All the different records have its place in the book, mm -hmm. but they're not, uh, they're not linear. They're organized by vibration. So as the observer right now, the one who is opening the book, what is the vibration? What does it open? The vibration is a sound mm -hmm. and light. And it's it's like alive and moves around mm -hmm. and it just is it's a uh, frequency mm -hmm. that's caused by the light and sound mm -hmm. I think that's how I can it's hard to explain does this light and sound uh, create <clears throat> what's on it's in what's in the pages of this book does her frequency have to match the frequency of the pages? It is, it is her. Mm. It's, what she, it's, it's what she is. So allow that book to open to a page he needs to see today. and allow that hologram to appear. It's, it's like I'm <clears throat> ushering people, mm -hmm. ushering people where they need to go. Let's find out where they're going. Where do they need to go? It's like they go it's like they go and jump off a cliff. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? And dive. Mm -hmm. What does this cliff mean? Some people, <clears throat> some people are scared to jump off the cliff, and some people are jumping off and and. They're happy. They're like doing flips. What is the significance of the cliff? I think it's like going in. Mm -hmm. Going in 
to wear. <coughs> going down. Mm -hmm. And they're going into bodies. Ah, okay. So you're the one ushering in these souls into new bodies? I'm holding the hands of the ones that don't want to jump. Mm. Tell me more about this. Why would they not want to jump into new bodies? They're just... They don't want to jump off that cliff. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think they're... I think they're maybe haven't done it before. Mm -hmm. And there's like other ones that are pros that are like back flipping and woohoo, you know. Mm -hmm. And there's some that just gracefully just go up to the cliff and they just they just like a swan, they just gracefully just go down like ease with ease. Mm -hmm. They know exactly what they're doing. But these are the ones that are just I'm holding their hands and <clears throat> What do you transmit to them as you hold their hand? Safety. Mm -hmm. It's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. So is this kind of like your job that you do? Is this is a role of yeah. yours? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when does Michelle do this? When does she actually hold these hands? Does she do it in her sleep? She's always doing it. Mm -hmm. She's always doing it. <clears throat> now, is this an aspect of Michelle, or does she have more? What do you mean? Is this her only role? No, this is just part of the processing. Mm, okay. So let's find out what other things she does in this processing. Meaning, let's turn the page. Okay. She takes she takes information and puts it in these books for other people. of information their experiences mm -hmm. their frequencies <clears throat> their colors she's like um, sometimes she's sometimes she's a librarian too hmm. what do people use this information for why does she need to store it in these books so they can look at it in between lives hmm does that help the soul? It's more, <clears throat> it's more of a, just a data collector than anything. Okay. Anything else that she does on that page? She teaches she teaches other librarians how to file the information. Hmm. How to... How to put it in the book. Mm -hmm. It's a secret on how to do it. It's, it's, a, <clears throat> it's something that has to that you have to be born to do, mm -hmm. to be able to access it mm -hmm. and to file, because it's, you can't mess up with the books, mm -hmm. can't mess the books up. So how does she get this role, this very important role? 
she's always been she's always done that mm -hmm. she was <clears throat> she was created for that okay good any other information from this page No. All right. So let's close that page. Let's flip it over and let's go to another page that's relevant now to the life of Michelle. Be there now. Where are you and what do you see? It's this life that mm -hmm. she's in. All right, so let's go Go pinpointing some of the things that she wants to know in this life. And let's find these answers. Can we ask the questions that she brought here today? Yes. Thank you. She wanted to know what occurred at the equinox in September that removed so many blocks in her life. Could you show her first what the blocks were and how they were removed? There had been <clears throat> A frequency that she was stuck on that kept things going at a certain pace in her life and the alignment for the energies coming to the planet allowed more energy than she had experienced before to shift the frequency to align her with higher outcome mm -hmm. than she had done before, because she'd done this lifetime before. Mm -hmm. In what way? <clears throat> Is this like a rerun of mm -hmm. this life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... At that alignment, at that time, many experienced the energies that were perfectly timed to move those to the timeline that they should be on. Mm -hmm. And that's why she experienced something so dramatic because she was so far from where she needed to be at that particular point to move forward with what she is working on. What is she working on now? <clears throat> She's helping prepare for the larger energies that will be coming that will shift consciousness even more as we gradually allow the energies to come to the planet. Mm. Now, she says that she had this shift and that all of a sudden, the, there was an Anunnaki healing and collapsing of timelines. Is this what we're talking about? She was supposed to have worked with these ladies many years ago. Mm. And 
did not follow the guidance to meet meet them <clears throat> many people many people were not aligning with the things that they had planned to do mm-hmm. and this particular wave of light of energy sound frequency color was sent to allow those who needed to realign with their plan what they had set to do put them closer to that hmm. now when you said that she wasn't in alignment to work with these other women was there a timeline shift that she kind of did a a rerun and meeting them at the right time can that happen she had jumped many times into the future and mm-hmm. into the past and because she was jumping so much she inadvertently got away from the final goal that she was trying to mm. achieve by jumping so much trying to go back and fix something was changing something in the future and that misaligned her with where she needed to be now she says that <clears throat> she has dreams of her moving things around in the air with her finger and packing and arranging other people's suitcases is this a metaphor for the the timeline shifting or is she actually rearranging other people's lives or what no this was this is her this was her experience okay. she was moving things she was moving things in her reality okay for the meeting of meeting of other people mm-hmm. so how have these these meetings shifted her life she's now able to manifest things she's learning the the art of master manifesting mm-hmm. you have to be in the frequency to be able to magnetically attract what you'd like mm-hmm. you have to be in the frequency of that that what you would like to manifest to you she was not on that frequency and the energies realigned her she sent frequencies to herself and the gateway was open that allowed those frequencies to come from her higher aspect to her and that's why it was such a significant change for her because it was meant for her mm. many people many people on the planet had higher selves higher aspects or higher beings working with them to use the opportunity of that alignment to reach their human selves to bring that energy in it was this uh, all happening at the equinox or before the preparation occurred before the equinox okay but the alignment the actual alignment that allowed for the energy to come in was at the equinox mm-hmm. now how does one know if they have shifted a timeline well for her everything in her life changed within 24 hours can you give me some examples
for her, it was an instant manifestation of a relationship breakup mm -hmm. and then a meeting of two other people that she began working with on these Anunnaki timelines like she describes them. Mm -hmm. But it was connecting with the time that she was, that she came to earth to work. She came to earth to meet the Anunnaki family, knowing that she was coming to help them rearrange their records and to correct what they were going to be doing, that she knew they were going to be doing it, but they didn't know that yet. So she inserted herself into that time to meet them, to kind of become familiar with them, to see how their personalities, actions, vibrations, were so that she could work with them in the future. Okay. What time period were we talking about here? This is when they came. Mm -hmm. Before the time of Atlantis, there is no years. There are points, reference points, and this was before <clears throat> before they changed the DNA in the human body. Mm -hmm. She played with them when she was a child. And she spent many she spent much time at their their palaces. Hmm. When did she do this? Was she was this in a dream? Did she slept? This is an insertion hmm. into a timeline. Okay. Of an aspect of her soul. Okay. How is she as far as remembering the different aspects of herself? She has not much memory because it was decided that it would interfere with the allowance of what needed to unfold in her life in order to do what she intended to do without being distracted with other lifetimes. Okay. The focus is to be on this lifetime. Mm -hmm. Now what she's doing now, and what we're both doing now, to access information, how does that affect what she does in this timeline? It's everything. Everything can be corrected, transmuted in the now, in this lifetime, in every moment. by living the life that is planned by her. Okay. Is this the life that she planned before she incarnated? There is a template <clears throat> before incarnation, but then there is always the higher self working every moment mm -hmm. and planning the next step. Can you explain a little bit about how the higher self works with a person? I, as the higher self, actually am from the same soul that she is from. But I 
have my own personality, have my own life, but I'm very closely connected to her because she is an aspect of me. I sent forth a part of me to be her because I would never send all of me down there because I don't want, wish to get lost there. As a higher self, how many aspects do you have? Many. Mm. They're not all where she is. Mm -hmm. They are various places. I'm in many places at one time, but I do focus much of my attention on what is happening on your planet. Mm -hmm. Now, when we first started out in this session, you were showing her this woman, this red-headed woman, Ariel, who helped the souls come in and then helping them come to this next incarnation. Why did you show her that? Because that is what she will be doing when souls transition mm -hmm. to the new earth. Mm -hmm. And why did you show her that those souls that had come from that planet that had been blown up? Because she was on that planet too mm -hmm. and had another aspect of herself of us mm -hmm. and her family. So by being on that planet, has that affected how she reacts about what's going on in this life? Does she appreciate this planet more? What it has done for her is, in this life, she doesn't feel like she has a home. Mm. She travels a lot and she gets much enjoyment about being mobile a lot. Mm -hmm. And it does always give her the longing to be home. But that longing is simply the separation that she and I have. Mm -hmm. And when we connect now, she feels more like she is whole and that makes her feel more connected to home. Now, a lot of star seeds talk about going home. Yes. First waverers walking out or bilocating, being able to return if they wish. Can you explain that from your perspective, what that means? The DNA does not allow the multi-dimension multi-dimension connection that the human is used to having and the light and frequency as it raises has been slowly activating the DNA to where the consciousness will be again connected to the multi-dimensional aspects like I have been connecting to her and like I connect to another aspect of myself that's larger than me. Is that, does that answer your question? Well, it's the longing, I believe, that a lot of the star seeds feel. I want to go home. I don't want to be here. Yes. Why? It is the desire to return to 
It is her desire to return to me, mm -hmm. to integrate with me. So is it the separation yes, that the everyone separation. is longing for? Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's not really being on earth, it's the separation that they're grieving? That is correct. Okay. It is the wholeness of unconditional love and the vibration. Mm -hmm. Can we raise our vibration enough to where we can feel one with the higher self? <clears throat> this has been misunderstood as every human carries the vibration within them. Mm -hmm. There is There is a, there are layers, layers of energy covering the, covering up the vibration. The vibration has never changed. The soul's vibration does not change. The vibration does not need to be raised. The layers of block, blockages, need to be peeled away. Energy work and frequency can peel these layers away and allow that energetic connection once again. I have another question about what she felt about a dream that she had, a dream about a new assignment. She was told she was a new hire, and then she woke up. What was that dream about? That dream was explaining to her the question that she had had as to her role in the upcoming shift to the new earth and it was confirmation that indeed her desired position or what's the word role mm -hmm. in assisting is about to really begin. Tell me more. What does that mean? That means that the wait will soon be over for her to remember everything that she's been trained for and to begin to perform the tasks that she wishes to achieve in order to help the souls who wish to move from one frequency to another by utilizing the divine frequency that will be coming to the planet that will in essence blast through those blockages and rearrange frequencies and harmonize and attune the soul, the spirit, the spark back to its original state which will match the frequency of a new reality and will attract that to them, she will be assisting in that in a different way than she has before because this is done differently on this planet in under these circumstances than it ever has been done before on this planet. Is this a solar sneeze that she talks about? It is indeed something that comes from the cosmos through 
the gateways or suns and will indeed come from the sun her reality Mm -hmm. now how will this affect people I've heard many different things some saying that people will be very enlightened other will be very afraid it will affect different people different ways some people will not be prepared physically to receive the transformational energies some people some people will be taking in the energies as if they haven't had anything to drink from eons of time and will mm. drink it in and how are we to feel when we get hit by the solar sneeze the ones who are thirsty it is the reconnection the reconnection to your higher aspects and your creator Mm. that realigns and just as you have your astral body emotional body mental body and need spiritual body and need to align those into your physical body you also now will align with your higher aspect body which is then in alignment with its higher aspect body and it's like a nesting doll situation Mm. to where it is again once again in alignment when it is in alignment you utilize the memories wisdom experiences of more of more of your over soul's essence and the gateways stargates are more accessible the freedom to move you already are that but you are connecting with that does that Mm. answer the question yeah but I want to be a little bit more specific so for example once we get hit by this will we for example be more empathic will we be able to connect with other people better those changes should occur before this Mm. large amount of light come to your planet okay and it is different for different people mm-hmm. will it be a positive thing for everyone it is nothing but positive mm-hmm. to be in alignment once again with mm-hmm. your creator okay and will be A most fulfilling wonderful feeling to be in that frequency again which is missing mm-hmm. in many people on your planet now a lot of people right now turn to religion to feel comfort will this affect those people or will it enhance what they believe now religion does not determine the soul's purpose and frequency of their essence Mm -hmm. whatsoever okay Now, Michelle had a dream of being in class, learning about being able to hear people's thoughts 
and then how to shut it off when she needed. Why did she need this information? What was it for? As the DNA is activated in the body, more of your abilities that different people will have different abilities. One of the abilities that she will have will be telepathic communication. However, until the bifurcation between souls who wish to live in the new high frequency and the souls who are not quite ready for that happen, that it may be a little difficult to learn how to hear people's thoughts and communicate with people when there are so many unconscious thoughts. Mm. So it becomes <clears throat> becomes a necessity to learn when to be able to turn that ability off and also for her in particular it will be a way to make people aware of their thoughts and there will be no more secrets hmm. what do you tell now to an empath who feel so much of what's going on around. They could feel the pain and sorrow of others. You can feel empathy towards animals, even trees. What do you tell these empaths so that they can thrive without carrying the load themselves? There are many on your planet who have found the place of balance or what has been termed a zero point. And Michelle is one of these. And it comes with a... It comes with a letting go of... fear, and the need to control the situation, an allowance of the higher self to continue to peel the layers back so that the frequency within is shining through enough to, in essence, disconnect from the frequency of the collective consciousness in a way to where they become the observers and not completely immersed mm -hmm. and instead holding a, holding the divine clen cleansed frequency the pure frequency and drawing the collective consciousness towards that frequency rather than being immersed in the chaotic frequency, the unbalance. So for those who are feel feeling too much, in a way there becomes a point to where you can allow your higher guidance to help pull you or disconnect you from that by peeling back the layers and exposing the true divine frequency that is connected with 
your higher self and creator more than being immersed in the lower collective consciousness frequency. Okay, thank you. Would you talk about the new earth, please? What would you like to know? What is the new earth? The new earth is what is created by those of the collective consciousness who have a desire to create something different than what they have created and have time traveled and have collectively realized that they wish to have a reality without extreme polarity and what seems to be eternal imbalance and wish for the template of the earth creation to be restored and enhanced to provide a new human experience. And to invite those who wish to play in that sandbox, so to speak, mm -hmm. to come join them. So going to the new earth, is that a choice? It is a choice, but it is also a new, a whole new experience <clears throat> because the higher essences of the humans have decided that the old sandbox will be disassembled piece by piece by piece and drained of the sand. Mm -hmm. So it is a natural choice for those who are being nudged to be moved out of the, what we will call the old reality as it crumble, so to speak. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but some people, some of these beautiful souls will not be going to the new earth. They will choose. They will choose to go back to their highest and best place of existence for their soul as they have created planets and earths and do not wish to play in that sandbox but perhaps create their own sandboxes or return to sandboxes that they have already created elsewhere okay how do we change ourselves in order for us to get on this new earth Allow, mm -hmm. allow your higher self, communicate with your higher self and verbalize the request with your free will to reestablish that connection and allow the connection between you and your creator to be expanded and to be uncovered to be exposed, to be shining once again. And the main thing that we would like to share with you today 
is something that we shared with Michelle at a point where there was so much information and so many people in their own experiences saying so many different things that we gave her a word everywhere she went she ran into it and the word was stop we put stop signs in front of her we put roadblocks in front of her we put people in front of her to stop her so that she would stop with the many tools and methods and teachings and ways of thinking and learn to let go and allow that higher connection and trust that we trust in us and we showed her what it's like for us to drive the vehicle and she rather liked it <laughs> and that is what we would like to share today is trust and allow that we know we know where to take you and we're pretty good drivers a lot better than you are now how does one who says I don't know if my higher self is even there how does one connect with their higher self we are always there and it's it is very simple it is a matter of taking the time for yourself in a quiet place to commune with yourself with us and <clears throat> to remove distractions and you are the one that needs to figure out how that is done because if we were to tell you how to do it then what would be the point of you coming to earth to figure out how to do it but we will tell you that all it takes to begin the process is the intention to do that then we ask that you pay attention pay attention to our signals at first it takes a very long difficult period of time for the signal to reach you and for you to receive it and to understand that it's a signal but after you begin to acknowledge and ask for more signals we are sending more and more and faster and faster and then it's like a Morse code it begins with slow long beeps and then it becomes faster and faster until it's one long solid connection again where we can come and go and where you can come and go and to where there is no separation or distinction and that is the goal and that is what new earth is it is allowing for the expansion of a higher frequency of your divine self to create with those who are willing and wanting to create with you something completely new but you use a template for creation and there have been those children who have not 
been very responsible creators in one way, but in another way everything is allowed. But then there are those who carry records of information that remind others that some things work and some things don't work so well. And so your higher self can help you make the better choice in creation and create something that will be more fun this time. Thank you. Do you have a final message for all those souls who are here today listening to this that they can take with them? Yes, one moment. Dear ones, you are creating this reality. Every moment, everything that you are experiencing is showing you something. True awareness is paying attention to why something is happening in your reality but not thinking too much about it, but acknowledging it, and perhaps asking us, why did this happen? And then waiting for the answer. The more you ask and the more you communicate with us, the more we are able to share to help you see where your creation perhaps isn't in your highest and best frequency. And so I ask that you co-create together with your higher divine self in a conversation. And we like to play. We like to help you change your reality so that you see what you don't want and can make a choice on what you do want. And we invite you to realize how fun this can be to do this. And if you are not having fun, we remind you that you did think that it would be fun. So we remind you to find the fun in your creation and know that we are always here And now is the time to connect with us and to show other people how to have fun. And that raises the divine essence within you like you can't imagine. And that will bring the frequency that you truly are to all of those around you and to help them find that which you are, which is an aspect of source creator, which is unconditional love and has no judgment for anything that's ever happened ever in your creation. You are perfect and you always have been. And in this quote, time, unquote, that you are in, returning to that frequency is what will, is what is, it's the fun. That's the fun is returning to that frequency and how to do that is to use the life that you created for yourself that is unfolding. And if you are hitting a roadblock or if you have a door that's slammed in front of you, 
That means stop. And it means try something different. It's in a way a challenging game, but we would not say that that is a very good word. But if you wish to use that terminology and thought process to start playing the game and mastering the game like your show Survivor on television, outwit, outwit, out play and outlast, you can outsmart this game and learn how brilliant it was and go on to create something that is even more brilliant. Does that mm-hmm. answer? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Are we complete today? Yes, thank you, Alba, for your work and for bringing your subject today to this because there are multiple things happening at one time that are perfectly aligned for the movement for all souls involved. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. All over. Welcome back. Thank you. How was it? Unlike anything I've ever experienced. (laughs) You said that last time. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Wow. It was great. I feel... I'm cold. (laughs) (laughs) I'm cold. Yeah. Get you you out of here, but you did great. Good. Good. Can't wait to... I can't wait to hear it. Yeah, I'm sure everybody will have some words for you. Oh, gosh. (laughs) You did great. Thank you very much. Thank you.